which when I was a kid, one of the most popular shooters, matter of fact, the first shooter I've ever played online was a little game called SOCOM Fireteam Bravo. Yes, the first game I ever played online was a PSP game. And then I played SOCOM 2 afterwards. Um, what's a name? It was because you needed the adapter for the PS2. And I think my family couldn't afford it at the time. But then I had a PSP. You didn't need no adapter. I don't think it was just online like Wi-Fi. I think. I don't remember. But anyways, uh, there's rumors going around that SOCOM 5 might have possibly leaked. Or PS5, whatever the fuck it's supposed to be called. Let's read into it. Is it back? How do you feel about Invincible giving Angstrom Levy the beats by Dre? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you just spoiled the show for me. Um, I haven't watched it. Uh, but a bit, a bit, a bit. Back in 2019 and 2020, there were a plethora of rumors that a new SOCOM game was in development for the PS5. And for the worth of it, we ourselves have heard a SOCOM project was being kicked around conceptually and in a pre-production stage. This was four or five years ago, though. Either all of those rumors were fake, including what we heard, or the project just never went anywhere, which does happen in game development quite a bit. Whatever the case, the rumors are back, and this time there's more to chew on than just scuttlebutt. Goddamn scuttlebutt. Did someone try to steal your PSP in high school too? Nah. But I knew some people that got their PSP stolen. Um, I didn't really like... Yo, shout out the Dolo kicks with the sub. Appreciate it. Not as loyal as Amy's dumbass. The few, the few people I know that got their PSP stolen in high school, it was because they were flexing them, like they were the kid in every class, like playing it and showing it off to everybody. So then, like, I remember a couple times, if people knew you had a PSP, they would the the go to thief move was they would wait for you to go to PE class. And then they would break the lock on your locker and steal your PSP like out of your bag. But nah, I never got my shit stolen because I never flexed my shit like that. Um, the only I think I brought my PSP out in class maybe like two or three times, and it was computer science class. I didn't only a handful of people knew. Uh, that was a spoiler from the guy that decided to ruin it for the people who haven't watched season two. Great job, buddy. Proud of yourself. Yeah, you definitely spoiled. It. I haven't seen, I haven't watched the rest of season two. You just ruined it for me, buddy. Uh, I lost my PSP unfortunately. I wish they would make a PSP too, a proper one, not a Vita. A dude stole mine, got caught, gave it back, and but kept the battery. That's ghetto. What do you do with the battery? Stick it up his ass? What's the point of that? Over on ActorAccess.com, acting talent David Veach lists on his resume motion capture work for SOCOM 111 by Sony. According to the resume, he is the co-star of the game. And as Reddit points out, this doesn't appear to be a typo for SOCOM 3, as he's not credited on that game or another SOCOM game. So what the hell is going on? Well, at first glance, it appears Veach has spilled some beans. This is the first we've heard of SOCOM 111, and there's no reference of it anywhere on the internet. First of all, I hope this game, if it's real, I hope it's not called SOCOM 111. I hope this is just like a code name. Uh, unless this is some bizarre left field error, this appears to be a genuine leak, and the fact that the work is listed on motion capture suggests it's most likely a video game. David Veach. This, this picture's crazy. <laughs> Uh, da -da 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 -da, television. Da -da -da. Reno 911. He's done. He's done motion capture for SOCOM 111. He's the co star. Interesting. Same. I didn't even bring mine to school unless we had a field trip. Yeah, you got to move smarter. As you may know, the series that created the, they took a screenshot of this shit just in case. So he can't, uh, he can't, he can't, uh, get, take it down. <laughs> he probably doesn't know this. Like, if this is real, like there's a SOCOM game, these, these leaks are always funny to me. Because like these actors, they're genuinely just updating the resume. They don't, he probably does not know. To him, the motion capture he did for this, whatever unreleased SOCOM game is, is just work for him. He probably does not know that like a certain portion of the gaming community is fiending for this shit. This is like a legendary series. Uh, as you may know, the series that created the Shepard of Series Zipper Interactive was shut down by Sony back in 2012. To this end, it's unclear who within the family of PlayStation Studios uh, could be working on this. The lack of obvious candidate may suggest it has been farmed out. That said, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Right now, all we have is this resume. This appears to be a genuine leak, but even if it is, it's still just a leak. This is not confirmed. Or, or, or also, he might have actually legitimately did motion capture for this game, but it might not ever come out. It could be, it could be canceled mid-development. Um, this is not confirmed official information. Even if it is real, there's no guarantee this project is an active development. All this is to say, take everything with a grain of salt at the moment of the publishing. None of the implicated parties have commented on any of this. We don't suspect this will change for a variety of reasons. This man woke up like, what? Why, is, why are they writing articles about me? What the hell? 
Yeah, so many games get canceled mid-development or whatever. Well, why are they writing articles about me? I just did a little motion capture or whatever. I hope it's real. I love SOCOM. I hope it comes back and they find some way to put some like unique spin on it. Uh, let's play devil's advocate here. Let's um subscribing. Yo. enough money for TBH to cop a brick from Shout out to Space Poppy with the sub. Let's play devil's advocate here. Let's pretend like a new SOCOM is in development. Let's pretend like it's real for a moment. Uh, like they said in the article, Zipper Interactive shut down in 2012, which is the original creators of the game. But Sony owns the IP, so then they can they can give it to another studio, basically. Who do y'all think should make SOCOM? Who y'all want to see make it if it's real? Mm, mm, mm. I don't have an answer. I don't know. Who who's making who's making quality third person games? I'd say Naughty Dog, but they don't know how to make anything other than The Last of Us Remastered. Bungie? Mm, I don't know about that. Respawn? Respawn is more, 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 known more for like action shooters, like fast paced. Could they make a tactical game? What's so calm? Not soul. S O U L. <laughs> so calm. It's a, um, it's a classic shooter from the PS2 era. God damn, you niggas is babies in the chat, bruh. Da -da -da -da. This game right here for the OGs is a classic. This and Fireteam Bravo, some of the greatest games of all time. It's an old school third person shooter that was popular on PS3. You said we owe it. I know this nigga said, what is Soulcom? This is crazy. I, I'd argue, I'd, <laughs> I'd argue this game put PS2 online, not PS2, but the online aspect of PS2 on the map. This was the first popular online PS2 game. Um, you said it did, yeah. Motherfuckers played the shit out of that. What are you barking for, dude? So calm, fire team. And then this is the one that, like, I played the fuck out of this shit. I don't know how they did it with one analog stick, but this game is crazy right here. This game was this game, yo, dead ass. This game is the, the game that taught my ignorant ass what Granada means. Because you remember in Fireteam Bravo or all the SOCOMs, when they throw that drink, I mean, it's a standard now, but that's where I learned what it meant. Granada. I was like, oh, shit, I'm learning languages and shit, bro. This shit is crazy. <laughs> I remember playing SOCOM. This shit was a classic, bro. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a classic third-person tactical shooter. It was kind of ahead of its time because... It was one of the first shooters that I know of where you were able to control your teammates, tell them what to now nowadays it would be primitive, but back then it was super advanced. And then the PS2 version, it came with a headset, one of them cheap ass Logitech headsets that are like $20. And if you wanted to, you could speak into the headset and give your teammates commands. It probably sucks nowadays, but it was good back then. Ugh. And this shit was great because on the PSP, it had online, it was free. And the PSP had a headset too. So then, you know, after school, you know, they didn't have no um like Xbox Live or PlayStation Network. It, all the online was just through the game's menu. So you like, you had to tell your friends like, yo, I'm gonna be on at 6 p.m. after school, bet. You see your friend online, then you could talk through the headset. <sighs> Good times. I was saying like, um, I would imagine the mechanics are super dated now. But I'm curious to see if there was a studio that could put an interesting spin on it and make it more modern. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, what's the name? Uh, Naughty Dog is really good at third person shooters. Like my, my I, I actually really my favorite thing about Uncharted was the multiplayer. Uh, I like the multiplayer more than the story. I thought it was criminally underrated. But like I said, they're too addicted to making um, remasters right now. So I don't know if they can do it. What studio y'all think could do it? Uh the economy was way back what was way better back then too debatable what year did the socom fire team bravo 2 come out because wasn't it 2008 when there was a there was a market crash what are you talking about nigga? release day 2006 yeah it was, it was yeah i don't know bro there was a recession i don't know about the economy being much better bro because 2008 that was not that was the housing crash <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you you must have been a kid i remember that shit and then and then right after that you had the government furlough because that's how i lost my job so trust me i know sucker punch maybe you said damn you're right you're right yeah you're right <laughs> i've been an adult very long time i'm old uh monolith soft they did splatoon and other high quality nintendo games do they do stuff outside of nintendo 
That'd be interesting. I don't know. Like, I feel like third person shooters are not as big these days. Uh, now nah, the economy was way worse back then. The economy steadily grows up slightly. I miss being able to go to the Chinese food store with five dollars and walking out with a full plate and ice cream. Pretty, pretty much. Next year we lost Michael. Crazy times. What did you like, bro? So calm. All objectives. This nigga. This nigga linked a walkthrough. <laughs> Look at them graphics, chat. Woo! Hey, back then this shit looked real, bro. Like, damn, I'm really in the Middle East. And keep in mind, keep in mind, this was back when the war in the Middle East had just started. We was in Iraq and Afghanistan. And patriotism was at an all-time high. Because remember, we got attacked. So, like, niggas was playing this shit. Like, yeah, we outside, bro. America. <laughs> we need a new X-Men Legends. Oh, shit. This shit dusty as hell now. Uh, according to Twitter, this is what Rise of Ronin looks like. I know, right? <laughs> this shit look. I know. I, I'm so sick of this shit. This shit look like a PS2 game. Shit look at this. So Rise of Ronin looks like this. When people say that shit, like they have to be young because they wasn't a part of this era. But like, nah, it doesn't look that bad, bro. I get it. Rise of Ronin could look better, but it doesn't look this bad. What are you talking about, dude? You are definitely just just yapping. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope this rumor is true. I love SOCOM. Hopefully, it comes back. Uh, the back of the manual legit had a recruitment page to become a Navy SEAL. Did it really? Thanks That's for resubscribing. This should so be a calm. CBH to cop a brick from Dr. Egg. So calm to recruitment. Uh, it did. I don't remember that. Da -da 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 Recruitments. I wonder if there's like an image of that shit. Anybody got an image of that shit? That's fucking funny. Uh, shit. I still have my copy. Hey, hold on to it. That shit gonna, that shit probably worth money now. They said if you're too, they said if you're too good, you go to the Navy. <laughs> that shit is a recruitment tool. They say, get your ass over here, bro. The KD's too high. That's hilarious. 12 year old kid. You're sick of the game. Join the military. Pretty much. I thought it was kind of a joke. Ah, it wasn't meant to be taken seriously. Or was it? Uh, what's Hell Divers two even about? Matter of fact, since you want, since you brought up Hell Divers in the chat, we can talk about that now. I saw this article. This is really funny. Now, judging by this headline, I think I know where this is gonna go, but I don't know because I didn't read the article. I just saved it. But I know for a fact. I said on the stream like a week or two ago. I think the funniest thing about Hell Diver two success is the lack of self awareness in the player base. Hell Divers two is one hundred percent a satirical game where you play the villain who's been brainwashed by the government to spread freedom. And I feel like most of the player base, I feel like most of the player base is aware of that and they play into the joke. Cause keep in mind, the developers are Helldiver 2. I think they're from like Sweden or something. They're from some European country. They're not American. They are making fun of Americans. <laughs> but I feel like, and I feel like most people get the joke, but I also feel like there is a certain portion of the community that the joke just, the, the whole joke about how the military industrial complex is a bad thing. I don't know why just, anyone follows this stream when you could be stalking. I mean, shout out to whoever just followed. Stalking. Just is just flying over a certain not because I'm not gonna put that on everybody. It's just I think it's a certain portion. The idea of Shadow having a BB. Yo, shout out to the little man with the sub. Appreciate it. That type of power. So let's see. So the headline of this article is Hell Divers Two Politics appears to be flying over the heads of some. And also, I seen on Twitter the reason I I, I say this article. I seen on Twitter there are some people that are arguing the game isn't political, and the game is 100 political. Uh, there's clear. There's currently a very funny. Kind of sad dust up. This money, I can now ditch the janky plane I shout out the little man and shout out the Nef God with the sub over Hell Divers 2, in which self proclaimed anti woke gamers, so I am right, this is what it is about, have previously heralded it as a rare game where they believe politics does not play a factor. Because remember, keep, my, keep the politics out of my game. This game is 100% political. Their faith has been shaken up by an Arrowhead community manager they believe they found to be. <gasps> progressively progressive who was then subsequently harassed but then their head scratching reading of hell divers 2 as a non-political game is worth examining the only thing that makes sense is that these players have the shallowest of surface level reading of the game stupid motherfuckers what i tell you the average i remember it was like 10 years ago the average reading level in america was like eighth grade i think it's like fifth grade now it's gotten worse 
uh, these are adults, by the way, not kids. You are a patron, and this means comprehension, not just reading, because a lot of motherfuckers can read, but there's a difference between reading and comprehending what you actually read. Um, you are a patriotic soldier serving Super Earth. You must kill bugs and evil robots trying to hurt your brothers in arms and innocent citizens. There are no storylines to insert progressive causes into. Everyone wears helmets, so no forced diversity, therefore no politics. I wonder if that's how people think in real life. Like, there's no diversity in the Army and the Marines and the Navy. Like, any of the service, as long as long as you have a helmet on, you're a battle buddy. Say that to a... It, this is so funny. <laughs> of course, this is wildly off mark, as Helldivers 2 is about the most blatantly obvious satire of mid militaristic fascism since the film that inspired it, Star Tro Starship Troopers, which is obviously it's inspired by. That, too, could be read as a movie about soldiers who fight bugs, but it's always meant to be a clear parody. Director Paul Verhoeven designed the film to be an over-the-top satire of a fascist propaganda. War makes fascists of us all, he said. Another quote attributed to him. What up, King Positivity? Not gonna lie, I thought those brain bugs were something totally different from what we got in the Starship Troopers. This is fucking funny. Do they have some, like, actual... Thank you. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. While Arrowhead CEO John Pilstead is normally playing along with the gag on Twitter, stamping out potential Democratic uh, dissent, we have also gotten clear winks and nods from him about it. I'm joking about it. Let's see. It's very clear uh, satire of fascism, which it, it I feel like it should be even more clear because, like I said, the developers are from like Sweden or shit. They're. <laughs> With the message being that the soldiers are told they're doing something patriotic or selfless when instead it's in the interest of enriching their enriching their bosses or growing their power. This is laid plainly in both Hell Divers too. Yeah. I want to see some actual tweets though. Man, I wish they actually put some tweets in there. I should have saved though. I seen some shit. There was there was some shit people there was a whole argument on my Twitter timeline of people saying that the game is not political. This is why we love it. It's not woke and da 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 da. I'm like, oh my god, bro. We've reached we've reached a point of society where satire is not understood. People only understand edgelord comedy because their favorite streamers are on kick.com. Many people laugh at satire, but it goes over most people's heads. Yeah, it makes I've always wondered, like people who go to comedy shows. I feel like when a comedian says like a clever joke, like I'll understand it. But I've always wondered, like other people sitting in the room how many of them actually understand the joke or are they just laughing because everybody else is laughing because remember most people are sheep <laughs> how do you get it off your timeline there's a way to copy the link to the tweet and then just like share it for the resub uh i think it's also intentional ignorance not wanting to know better intentional ignorance not wanting to know i don't know i feel like we need to give stupid people credit like you, it's okay to say people are stupid i feel like we've reached a point where like people are afraid to stay there like no like some people like it's not because intentional ignorance is they are aware of what it is but they're like no i'm just going against the grain like some people are generally just fucking this is why the word idiot exists what is this have you heard of the game called ai cody developed by one person and a few voice actors now what's this like, let's give stupid people credit i thought that was funny though that was worth sharing uh let's see king positivity is sharing this is called ai cody this is from nine months ago let me see yeah we went to school with him part of growing up is understanding the people you went to school with the people you grew up with on your block they become the the, the drug addicts the baby mamas the deadbeat dads the unemployed like they become the people that that's why it's important to make the decision they yeah, the robbers <laughs> that's why the dumbasses whatever you want to think of that's why it's important at a certain age and like honestly it's usually around 25 you need to make up your mind are you going in this direction or that one <laughs> especially because as you get older there becomes less time and you have more responsibilities you don't have time to be hanging out with people like that there's new gameplay that came out like a month ago i'm not gonna lie this shit look ashy already it looks a little full so He, <laughs> he said he typed robbers with animosity yeah i ain't gonna lie yo do you know somebody who became a robber or a booster this nigga is mad <laughs> oh shit delete facebook at the high school because of it no that's facts no fake i'm going through that phase right now it's it's a real phase bro it's a real phase 
rules before you can proceed. Now. And don't let nobody feel bad for you because you don't want to be 26 and go into the you club every more night. Subs than that? Rouge the Bat just upped the prices on her OnlyFans. The fuck I'm supposed to do with this? Yo, shout to Main Uncut with the sub. Shall we start? Yeah, life gets real, real quick. What kind of game is this? Oh, okay. Hold up. The frame rate kind of shaky. The concept is interesting. Action game. He said, damn, 26 too old for the club? I was kind of all partied out by like 25. I mean, if you want to still go to the club, but I, I will say... You 25 plus going to the club like every weekend. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You're looking kind of crazy. You're going down a path. You're definitely going down a path. Ba -ba -ba -ba. This looks interesting. I feel like they got to clean it up some more. It looks a little full sale, but I see. I'll say this. I see the vision. I see the vision. It looks all right. There's branching timelines and a demo out on their Patreon. Hey, see, I'm, I'm not paying for no Patreon. Did you play King Positivity? What you got, Ronin? Don't, first link of the day from Ronin. Oh, boy. Akira Toyama's new anime, Sandland, gets official dub. Oh, okay, nice. When's it supposed to drop? Um, the long-awaited dub for Sandland is available on Hulu and Disney streaming platforms in a matter... Oh, it's coming out soon. This is from two days ago, too. Uh oh, April 10th. Literally in two days. Hmm. I'm gonna have to check this out. Cause I know it got it got a nine out of ten, I think, from like IGN. People they were saying it's fire. Say rare Ronin W. Rare Ronin W. April 10th on Hulu and Disney Plus. That's all I need to extract from it. Oh, is this a is this the actual dub? Oh, this ain't even the dub. <laughs> this ain't even the dub. Eh? Might have to check it out this week. A broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> just, just call Ronan a broken clock. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, in Sony news, Sony says inclusion of their first party games onto PlayStation Plus has had a big negative effect on traditional sales. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh, let's see. I guess they released some quarterly reports, uh, projecting 30% revenue, uh, would have been 124 mil in year two. We're currently projecting 35 mil. That is only 9% year over year revenue. This represents a loss of 85 million because they put first party games on there. These games are all old though. Horizon Forbidden West was selling with uh, Interesting. They crying about old games. If this is, because I don't know where this information is coming from. If this is true, if this is true, don't ever expect day one releases like exclusives. Like let's say, like remember when God of War Ragnarok came out? Like don't ever, don't ever expect the new God of War to be on PlayStation Plus day one. If this is true, damn, is this more evidence PlayStation niggas don't buy games? This is crazy. They just be on Twitter Spaces yapping. <laughs> Because, you know, the, the true is the opposite is not true for Xbox. Uh, Game Pass has been boosting sales. So you can't blame PlayStation Plus. What if PlayStation niggas just be talking? They don't be buying games. If it ain't Uncharted, they don't buy it. <laughs> it feels like they're trying to make Game Pass look good, bad. Well, this is for PlayStation Plus. This doesn't apply to Game Pass. Game. There's been plenty of articles I've read, and some of them I know for a fact. If I had the links, I would show you. I know for a fact we've covered on at least two or three podcasts of articles showing evidence debunking. Because one of the talking points I've seen people have is Game Pass is bad for gaming because it, 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 it hurts sales. But several articles have come out saying, I think High Fire Rush was the most recent one where people enjoyed it on Game Pass and they ended up buying it. Because the thing about Game Pass is games they um they cycle games like it doesn't certain games only stay on the platform for a certain amount of time and then they remove it so like if you want to 100 own it you do have to buy it eventually it's kind of like a pseudo renting system uh but there's been plenty of evidence that it hasn't affected games on xbox in terms of game pass 
um hi-fi rush is not on playstation plus i know we're talking about game pass um so i i just think this is more evidence that playstation niggas don't be buying games and they just like talking on youtube comments and twitter spaces <laughs> basically the disney vault basically the only thing about this is like i don't know where this data is coming from i don't know who this person is there's no way to um clarify or give any credit to this so i'm gonna take this with a grain of salt as much as i like to make jokes about playstation niggas not buying their exclusives and just talking on twitter it's not fair unless we can you know actually we know where this is fucking coming from i don't know where this is coming from this is not credible uh to advocate about this a lot of consumers i talk to feel like they don't want their time and money spent on extra tier to acquire a large game collection yeah well yeah that's the real issue playstation plus fucking sucks I've been, I've been making jokes for a while. Like you niggas paid $200 a year to play Ape Escape 2. This is crazy. And like, I like Ape Escape, but like, when did that shit come out? Like 2003 or something? Ape Escape. Uh, I can't spell. When did shit come out? Yeah, it came out 2002. I was a year off. You niggas paid $200 a year to play Ape Escape 2. Look at these fucking monkeys, bro. <laughs> Like, oh shit, I bought this PS5 to play Ape Escape at 120 frames. Nigga, be quiet. Get the fuck out of here. Playing Siphon Filter at 400 frames, nigga. Oh my God. Legend of Dragoon over 9,000 frames. Sony straight scamming. Yeah, straight scamming. What up, Seven Squids? Interesting. Um, Xbox News. Thanks for the resub, pal. Now I can afford a retwist for my locks. I canceled my subscription when they changed the prices. I'm getting Game Pass. Wait, they changed the price? Uh, what did they change it to? Shout out to King Woody with the sub. I appreciate you. Oh, no, I entered the stream and you talking like Frieza. Talking about them damn monkeys. Exclusive Xbox president Sarah Bond. Speaking of the monkeys, I recently found out about um a Dragon Ball fan manga. It's called Dragon Ball Kagome. Oh, the <laughs> Kagome is... Uh, into yasha it starts with a k does anybody know what i'm talking about it's pretty good i was watching some videos about it on youtube apparently it's like two years old uh but like there's like videos about it on like there's like a lot of just fan-made storylines and shit i'm like this stuff's pretty good man they should make this real um you know what i'm talking about you might know what i'm talking about <laughs> it's tough i found out about it from a tiktok and then i just went and searched it on youtube and somebody did like a whole read along and just kind of showed the pages and shit so i listened to it while i was cleaning the kitchen i watched it it was like an episode about Vegeta and in, in this timeline Vegeta gets to visit Universe 6 and he meets the king of Sadala which is the king of the Sands in Universe 6 and they have like a whole fight and you know my pride and all this other shit uh, uh why are you speaking about monkeys when Sarah Bond's on the screen oh cut it out just nigga does your shoulder hurt from reaching um exclusive Xbox president Sarah Bond has set up a new team dedicated to game preservation and forward compatibility uh <laughs> what you need to know anyways Sarah Bond has been promoted to the yes we know we know get to the article the complexity of the Xbox business is doubtless a huge challenge but there are yeah well, yeah we know come on what is where's the story at okay Xbox builds a new team for game preservation and the future Recently, the preservation of games has become an increasing concern, as it should be, especially because a lot of platforms are trying to ban emulators. Nintendo! As the shift to digital licensing models and online services have made it too easy for games to go permanently offline, it's a massive problem in mobile gaming where publishers and companies like Apple and Google have no problem wiping games from existence. Even core platforms like Nintendo are known to shut down stores, offlining many games. Microsoft is closing parts of the Xbox 360 store this year for new purchases. However, hundreds of the most popular Xbox backward compatible games escape the Xbox 360 and continue to live on on the Xbox One in the series. It seems that now they'll live on even further. Fuck Nintendo, all my niggas ain't Nintendo. <sighs> like an example is, um, recently, what was it, like two years ago when they released the, the Mario collection on the Switch? That was the first time you could buy Super Mario Sunshine, which is my favorite Mario game. That was the first time you could buy Super Mario Sunshine in like 20 years. Like how much is that shit going for now? Super. Uh, let's see, eBay. Cause I think it's expensive. Look at this shit almost 400 dollars 
to get a, a pristine copy of Super Mario Sunshine. This is crazy. So yeah, people were upset because if you wanted to play one of your favorite games, you had to A, chuck up $300 or hope Nintendo releases it again. And they didn't release it for 20 years. And the crazy part is, is they released that Mario All-Stars collection or whatever it was called. And they released it for like a month or two. And then now you can't buy that shit again. <laughs> So, word of advice, if you bought it, what was that shit called? Mario Collection on on, a, on Switch? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, this one right here. If you bought this shit, hold on to it. Because they were, they were printing like limited numbers of this shit. Hold on to it. It might be worth money. Nintendo just upset they can't make any better modern games. $129, bruh. Because it's hard to get. No cap. I paid 70 for mine a year back and it's already worth 129. This is why I be trying to tell y'all, if y'all got games, hold on to them. If you can, put them in storage. They might be worth money one day. Uh, TBH, you want to say TikTok is on some lame shit. There's like two or three accounts that post your clips getting tens of thousands of views. Follow, buddy. I'll yeah, it is what it is. I, I take it as a good thing. That means I'm I'm back in the algorithm, baby. I'm not tripping off of it. Um, uh, that it, it kind of just happens to anybody once you start to get popular people are gonna steal your shit but i mean as long as it links back to me yeah promotion is good um as part of the emails to her team sarah bond revealed that microsoft has now set up a dedicated team to ensure the future proof of the current xbox game library against future hardware paradigm shifts ensuring that our games remain accessible long into the future what games nigga i think that's the funny thing about it <laughs> that's the funny like kudos to them like they're they're making game preservation uh a priority my only thing is what are you preserving like, <laughs> what are you preserving fucking forza 7 gears 12 like come on bro uh we have formed a new team dedicated to a game preservation important to all of us at xbox and the industry itself bond said we're building our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players, and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of Xbox games for future generations of players to enjoy. I hope that the next Xbox is not emul. Well, emulation is okay, I guess. As long, yeah, as long as they prioritize and like every platform has it, especially at the beginning of a new console cycle, so people can play their older games. Did you play the Wii U before the servers went out? I can't say I did, buddy. Speaking of those accounts, I saw your plug uses the same title as you. LOL, both of them are my recommended. I thought I was tripping. You can steal the style, but you can't steal the respect. <laughs> Copy the style. <laughs> Sources tell us that Microsoft may have... Uh, I'm going to have to look these channels up sometime. Sources tell us that Microsoft may have more to share publicly in this area. Also, another reason I don't care, too, is especially on YouTube, uh, there's a new it's not new it's been around for like a couple years there's a tool in youtube where like it's called copyright if you become if you want to get into youtube know this it's in your youtube studio there's a there's a section called copyright any video that's still any person who steals your video it'll literally show up there um what's the name so like then all i gotta do is claim it and i could just make money off of them so like if anything they're helping me they're promoting me and they're making me more money so i don't really care uh wasn't the case a few years ago, but yeah, YouTube is in. Been, that's why I said YouTube is the best platform if you want to be a content creator. Um, besides Hi Fi Rush, what does Xbox have this new? Um, Hellblade Senior Saga. That's it. I'll give him Hellblade too. That's coming. Uh, Serban also paid tribute to Kareem Kadudri, who was also retiring from Microsoft after 26 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Xbox though for um preserving games. We need that especially if it's two or more channels ding 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 did someone say free clout pretty much uh another crab's treasure is coming soon too you got any advice for negotiations yeah uh yeah i got it i got some advice uh the first offer they make you is always the worst the first offer is always a test so if they offer you a thousand you're worth at least two and then you land on 15 if they try to be play hardball. That's the that's the advice I give you. Also, they're always gonna try to lowball you. But uh, that's why I said if uh, if they if they offer you a thousand, you're worth two. If they offer you five hundred, you're worth a thousand at least. And honestly, if you're popular, probably more. Uh, but uh, but you can't you can't be pussy and you can't be afraid to walk away, especially if they're asking for your price. Um. 
Insider Gaming reports, forget Ubisoft's quadruple A games. CD Projekt Red is, I don't even know what to call this. What do you call it five times? Five times A games. What is it, quintuplet or some shit? You said, damn, TBH don't do the podcast no more. We're still dropping gems. I would like to think. This is, honestly, what I do every day is pretty much the podcast. I don't know why people keep asking about Hokage thoughts. Yeah, quintuplet, quintuplet. Quint- quintuplet a games bro what the fuck god tier games before skull and bones hit the open market and probably sunk to the depths ubisoft ceo french guy stressed that the game's price point was justified because it was a quadruple a game if you're not familiar with the vernacular a triple a game is like yeah we know uh better than the best when quizzed about ubisoft's recent designation of skull and bones being a quadruple a game another european guy jokingly invented an all new tier of gaming prestige he was asked do you dare to reassess whether cd project red will continue to produce a triple a game to which he replied ours will be quintuplet a game this is fucking crazy that first lol that first sentence is mean i don't know how to pronounce his name bro oh you're talking about oh you're talking about the skull and bone shit because that just sucks bro it's not it's not even mean it's just real the game sucks <laughs> i think yeah i think it's fucking funny that game developers have got, got even game developers are clowning ubisoft now this is fucking funny when are you gonna wake up that's fucking funny the nah, ours will be five times more powerful honestly this is a dick dickhead way of saying it yeah that's fucking funny that's a light article just a little joke just a little joke this is getting out of hand. I hope the memes never stop. What did you link, Ronan? Link number two from Ronan. Will he get banned? Planet of the Apes. I don't care. I don't care. I do not care about this Frieza movie. I'm not going to lie. It's too many Planet of the Apes for movies for me. And this is coming from somebody who grew up watching Planet of the Apes. I've seen all the original ones because my parents were big fans of them. And then when they rebooted it, like in the 2010s or like early 2000s, it was good. And every single one of them is good, but it's just too many, bro. Too many of them damn monkey movies. I can't keep up. I don't think I've seen like the last two. I don't know what's going on with that shit, bro. Bring in the death ball from Frieza. I'm good off the monkey movies. Uh, bro, my cousin was telling me he's thinking about grabbing Skull and Bones. Ask him if he's sick. Yeah, it's just like fa- it's like Fast and the Furious for primates, bro. Like- <laughs> oh shit. Amazon. I mean, if you're into it, respect. It's just I'm I'm kind of monkeyed out, you know. I'm kind of monkeyed out. Uh, it's just, and I think it's because I grew up on it. That's why. Amazon Fallout series seemingly renewed for a second season before an episode even airs. Damn. Uh, before its first season has aired, Amazon's Fallout series has been set up for a second run. Variety reports that the Cal- California Film Commission has awarded $152 million in tax incentives to a number of shows, with the second season of Fallout including on its list. Fallout has the largest budget of any show at $153 million in qualified expenditures for the season. God damn. I'm calling it right now. If this show sucks, that will be used as a meme. Expect to see YouTube. If this show sucks and it bombs and gets bad reviews, which I don't think it will, it looks good. But if it does bomb, expect to see YouTubers put titles like $150 million TV show bombs or some shit like that. I'll be right there with them. Uh, (laughs) As a result, Fallout's production is currently primed, pun not intended, to move to the Golden State for its next season. Which is funny because I believe this show takes place in a post-apocalyptic California. Now it's actually going to be in California. The majority of the first season was produced in New York, although some filming also took place in Utah. Earlier this month, the show's executive producer, Jonathan Nolan, who co-wrote many of the brother, yeah, we know. I didn't know much about it. I was in the mood for a distraction. Nolan recorded before jokingly added. I think Chris has tasked me with writing The Dark Knight. Yeah, I don't care about none of that shit. $15 million an episode. This shit is expensive. I hope it does well. I hope it does well, because that's a lot. Well, it doesn't matter because it's going to get a second season already. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like you got to earn that shit. Uh, They're either super competent or super arrogant with this show. Are we going to see you on the show, TBH? Why would I be on the show? Because I'm in California. Yeah, maybe I'll show up as a, a as a background. Maybe. Uh, Funny thing. You never know. I might show up on a show that y'all never know, Uh, like randomly in the background. My uh, my girl, she told me that like during college, she um she used to do like um extra work because it's Cali. It's L- it, while well, I live in LA. It's it's Hollywood. So she told me that like they pay you like two, three hundred dollars a day to be an extra 
be in the background or be a live. She told me she did live studio audience work. <laughs> We've joked about doing that one day as like as a date. <laughs> I was like, uh, 300 bucks to go fucking sit in the crowd and cheer? Like, why not? You might see me on a TV show, like, randomly. Why not? Fuck it. Who knows? Uh, if I see a calling for this shit. Yeah, I had a friend in high school that would be an extra. Apparently, it's good money if you don't mind, you know, giving up your day to the show or whatever. Monkey Man was amazing, by the way. I didn't get to catch it this weekend. I probably won't be able to catch it next weekend because I got shit I got to do. And last but not least, Bandai Namco has quietly released three small 3D platformers for free. Free games alert. Bandai Namco, the publisher of Elden Ring and the developer behind this year's Tekken 8, has quietly released three small 3D platformers for free. Available to download right now on Steam, Not A Lot, Doranko Wanko, <laughs> and Boomer Road are 3D platformers released on March 22nd, and all three were developed by Bandai Namco. <sighs> Let's see. Not A Lot is a free-to-play robot hacking game. Let's look at the trailers. Anybody? Bandai Namco trying something different? Free? <laughs> Oh my God, a puzzle game. No, thank you. I wanted to be a live studio audience member for Jerry Springer. Uh, that would be funny. Get to crack jokes and like fucking roast people in there and shit. That would be on the W. You should be on the WWE. That would be fire. I saw everybody talk about WrestleMania on my timeline. I had to get off Twitter. I was like, oh, brother. Oh my God. I just can't get into it. Uh, yeah, Portal 3, basically. All these monkey movies, what Hollywood trying to say? <laughs> yeah, chill. Boomer Road, what is this? I think I've seen this trailer. This is some weak ass 1080p. Why is it so dusty looking? What is this sound? This is like it could be a fun platformer. It's free. Freeze is about to have a heart attack. I thought I killed you all. This looks like a fun platformer for free. Uh, I'm not mad at this. Boomer Road is giving, yeah, it's giving tech demo. And then what is this? Doronko Awonko. Oh, it's cute, guys. Not him squirting all over the place. Yeah, I'm good off this local.